An abnormal flood blood count can mean any number of things. And it's difficult to be specific. In many cases, it may not be anything to worry about. It could be a response maybe to an infection. Maybe a patient is anemic. Maybe it's a consequence of medications they are on or something other medical that is underlying it. So broadly, a full blood count is a test where, whereby we're checking three different indices, the hemoglobin, the white cell count, and the platelet count. And any of these indices could be abnormal for a whole number of reasons. So one of the most common conditions an abnormal flood blood count can indicate would be an abnormality in the hemoglobin. And then one of the most common referrals we may have could be a low hemoglobin, which is an anemia. And even that can may have many different causes, which during at the hematology clinic, we will investigate. Other, other possible abnormalities in the full blood count may be a low white cell count or a high white cell count, which will warrant further blood tests, maybe scans, and maybe a biopsy, such as a bone marrow biopsy. But on the main, this is very infrequently required. Also, the platelets may be low. This could be due to an autoimmune condition. It could be due to medications, or it could be due to other underlying medical conditions. Alternatively, the platelet count could be markedly elevated. Again, this could be due to other medical conditions. For example, an iron deficiency anemia. It can be due to infection, inflammation, or possibly an underlying condition arising from the bone marrow. So I would want to reassure that an abnormal full blood count in many instances does not indicate something serious, but it's good to get it investigated, particularly if there is a concern, should we be able to pick up what the possible explanation of that may be and hopefully reassure a patient or provide remedial care for it. So if a patient has an abnormal full blood count and if they do require treatment, it really depends on what the underlying diagnosis is. So if there is an anemia, we may need to correct it. And again, it could be if it's an iron deficiency, they simply require iron replacement. If it's due to a vitamin deficiency, we need to investigate why they have a vitamin deficiency and even an iron deficiency and replace the vitamin and also identify why that ar arose in the first place. If someone has a low white cell count, we will need to do further investigations in some instances. And if those investigations are uninformative, then we may need to do what's called a bone marrow biopsy. In many instances, a low white cell count can, some, can correct by itself over time. If someone's got a low platelet count, we may just simply monitor it. It doesn't require treatment. And should the platelet count drop significantly or should a patient develop symptoms such as bruising or bleeding from the gums, then we would have to consider a number of treatments that we may have available for an immune-based cause for the low platelets, such as steroids, to start off with. So the treatments we would provide for somebody who has an abnormal full blood count will really depend on what the underlying cause is. So there is not one treatment that fits all. So we do need to look at a patient's medical condition for example, what medications they have, what's their past medical history. And if appropriate, if we need to, we will prescribe treatment if it's indicated. So we're increasingly recognizing that the way we live day to day has an enormous impact on our overall health. And so Patients naturally want to be empowered and they will want to know what they can do for themselves rather than 
having a doctor prescribe a medication alone. So I always advise my patients to take good care of themselves, exercise, eat a healthy, well-balanced diet that minimizes processed food or sugars.